Hi everybody and welcome to a very exciting episode here on the Miriam Pianos channel. This is another piano review and today we're going to be looking at the Roland RD88, which is basically the love child of an FP30 meets an RD2000 and well, the rest is history. Uh, it's the first time we've just received one up here in Canada. We're very excited to be uh, taking a peek at it, doing deep dive under the hood on a lot of the features uh, that make this thing tick. Uh, and on a personal note, I just love this machine. So thank you so much for joining us. If it's the first time to the channel, we would really appreciate if you did subscribe. And now please stick around, enjoy the review. Let's get started on this right away. So let's start first by digging into the sound on the RD88. Now that's a loaded word when we're talking about a synth because of course sound refers to many things. We're going to talk about the sound engine, we're going to talk about specifically the sound offering, i.e. how many different patches are on here and different scenes, and generally how it handles sound and the control that it offers you to manipulate that sound. Um, the RD88 is, uh, right off the bat, is a little different than most stage pianos for one reason. Uh, one obvious reason, it's got onboard speakers, and the speakers are pretty decent. I think they're 12 watts in total, 6 watts per side, and for me, who's just been sitting here for the last couple hours just loving every second of being in front of this piano, uh, it has never felt like it was really insufficient uh, for me to be sampling the sounds, for getting a good sense of what they're delivering. Yeah, the bass is going to be weak on it. They're tiny speakers, uh, you know, what do you expect? Uh, we're not feeding it through PA. Um, I should mention, however, that what you are hearing at home is coming directly out of the two uh, quarter inch line outs on the instruments. You're not getting uh, kind of microphone sound through this, you're getting direct sound, uh, even though obviously this is the microphone sound you're getting through me. So there might be a tiny bit of bleed, but the vast majority uh, are direct. So the first thing is that they've got those onboard speakers, and like I said, I like how they've balanced them. Um, it's you know it's they've set it up so that you really can never push them to the point of distorting really badly. So they're not trying to get bass tone out of there that is just not realistic. It totally serves the purpose of personal playing, uh, and because as we'll mention later, uh, this has got it can act as a USB audio interface. You can actually hook this up to your computer and you could be using uh, you know, software instruments, software synths, uh, along with onboard sounds here, and it can all be just coming out of your local speakers. Uh, or if you've got headphones plugged in, then you know, everything's being blended there, uh, and you'd be picking it up through your headphones. Let's talk about the sound engine, and I guess I should say sound engines. Uh, the RD88 combines a few really interesting worlds all together. So this kind of sits at a bit of a nexus between Roland's synth world, which they're sort of working on, uh, I guess, um, combining or uh, streamlining that whole world with this new uh, Zen core processor, uh, so creating this kind of mutual modular uh, uh, synthesis uh, technology uh, that operates across all kinds of different machines um, and you can use it with hardware, you can use it with software, you can create a sound on one machine and export it to another machine. All sorts of interesting ways that that Zencore technology uh, could be used. So do some more reading on that because this is not a Zencore discussion, but I do want to point out that this is a fairly different way of going about a uh, synthesis engine and it's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to digging in a little bit more about the Zen core. And that deals with mostly the synth sounds on the instrument. So that is where a lot of the, uh, the polysynth stuff and the vintage synth sounds uh, that have been recreated here uh, from a lot of the older uh, Roland uh, analog as well as the digital synths are, there, are coming from. And they've, they're all loaded on here. Uh, there's over 3,000, that's right, 1,000 uh, patches loaded into this RD8. Um, all for, you know, in Canadian dollars, still under 2000 bucks. It's, it's remarkable. Uh, the way they organize that into here is, uh, you basically it's, it's, they call them scenes. 
uh, but more generically you could think of these as presets where it's up to three of those patches that are all combined into a single setting and that's what's preloaded here um, within the different categories. So piano, e-piano, clav, organ, strings. When you're going through these you're actually going to be selecting scenes uh, which are different combinations of up to three patches. So when it's talking about the 3,000 patches, uh, when you're looking through here, you're not going to see those 3,000. You're going to see up to about 500 of the scenes. The patches are those bits that make them up, and that's where the 3,000 is from. For the piano tone and the e-piano tone, that's coming from their uh, Supernatural engines, uh, which many of you will be uh, familiar with or you've heard of. Uh, and that's kind of an interesting uh, combination of both sampling and, and synthesis technology. So you've got sort of a core sample and then layered on top of that are all of these extra elements that you're able to manipulate. So in the case of an acoustic piano, which let's go listen to that right now. Right concert, the first one was just concert grand. So on top of the main core, you've also got lots of other nuance being added to that sound through the supernatural engine, such as um, you know fallback noise and let off uh, noise and uh, hammer noise and damper resonance and string resonance and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and so they've got that for the uh, acoustic piano and the e-piano stuff as well, uh, which is also very, very silky smooth on this machine. And then when you get into some of the other really, really thick, lush stuff like this. Which immediately makes me want to go and play a video racing game for some reason. Uh, Yeah, I don't know, this can really unleash your inner cheese. And I apologize that that is kind of what's happening right now. Uh, so we've got three tone engines crammed into this. We've got the Zencore, we've got the Supernatural Acoustic and Supernatural E-Piano sound engines that are generating that tone. The tone is coming to us uh, through some internal speakers, uh, also discrete line outs, uh, or you've got quarter inch headphones, or you can use this as a MIDI uh, USB audio interface, which is also very, very cool. Um, a few other things about the sound and your ability to manipulate it. Uh, this has super easy, well laid out controls. They're simple controls. I mean, you're not going to get into a crazy level of detail here, but for the person likely to be using this, um, which is maybe for some basic uh, studio DAW work, or even more likely, a nice live instrument that basically delivers you close to RD2000 functionality in a lot of areas at substantially lower cost and substantially less weight. For those kinds of users, um, a quick um, EQ adjust, low, mid, high, very, very easy to access right here. Uh, 
You've got a compressor, which is easy to manipulate and access. Your transpose function is right there in front of you and system-wide controls and settings uh, for reverb, chorus delay, uh, and tone, con tone color, which is uh, kind of a setting that changes depending on which patch you're using. In the case of a concert piano, for example, uh, it's the stereo uh, spread. So it kind of goes from mono to full stereo. Uh, and reverb. Um, your ability to blend those three sounds that we were talking about earlier is also really simple. It's set right here as either a dual or a split, or with all three on, it kind of is, is conceived of as two upper voices and a lower voice, uh, but there's no uh, sort of uh, key range splitting going on. So tons and tons of options to create all of these different scenes and a lot of very easy ways to easily manipulate them in real time uh, if you're live on a gig. Or a lot of really easy ways to create it ahead of time and save it as a favorite. So if what you're looking for is an instrument with a huge variety of tone uh, and a nice blend of uh, action quality, um, portability, uh, and just you know ease of use uh, this is just a, a brilliantly conceived of product to me it cuts right down the middle of all of those areas of priority and strikes the right balance um, if this had been available at the time I was shopping for my RD2000 I might not have an RD2000 right now I might have an RD88 in the back of my car and that is the honest truth so uh, we're going to move on to a quick discussion of action, but before we do that, uh, we'll get some specs up on the screen so you can have another look. Thank you so much for being with us today, and we'll be back in just a second. Roland has uh, equipped the RD88 with their PHA4 action. This is an action that is found on most of their FP series. Well, basically any of their piano products under about 2000 US dollars has the PHA4 action. Uh, I'm a big fan of the action. There are some users out there and I've heard in your comments and some other previous uh, videos and just generally I'm aware of the, of the uh, perception out there uh, that uh, this is a preferred action um, amongst a portion of people even over the PHA50 which is a more advanced uh, action that has uh, wood components and maybe uh, you know, a slightly more sensitive uh, sensor on it. The PHA4 is tried, tested, true. It's got a really uh, great ivory texture on the top of the white keys. It's got a kind of a matte finish on the black keys. It's not, you know, no exaggerated kind of ebony uh, wood texture on there. It has a triple sensor, so it's a really accurate MIDI output that it generates. Uh, and it kind of, you know, it just has this very specific uh, combination of, uh, you know, solid feel. The build quality on it is exceptionally good. Um, there's a little bit more lateral motion uh, than you're used to on some digitals. I don't find that to be a bad thing. I actually find it to be a little more realistic uh, to a broken in acoustic piano. Um, and it's you can play on it for hours and hours and hours, and I have. Uh, and it uh, seems to also kind of strike a nice balance between those who are classical players as well as contemporary players. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and in terms of how they've weighted it, it's it's right down the middle again. Uh, I have not done the, the gram test, but my suspicion uh, is that these keys are, are kind of somewhere in the low 50s in terms of uh, the grams required to get these keys in motion. Perhaps someone out there has already done this test, and feel free to share that information in the comments if you like. Uh, so. That's the action. We've got a PHA4, exactly the same beast that you're going to get in an, an FP10, FP30, FP60, uh, F140. Uh, this is a very well-known action. You're not taking any chances with this action. Um, it's probably one of the most popular, these the most successful um, actions that is out there in, in digital piano world right now. Really can't go wrong. So. Uh, We'll get some specs up about the action and then we'll be back for our third and final segment where we're just going to talk about some of the other more nuts and bolts practical features uh, about the instrument, some of the accessories that are available, uh, and uh, yeah, so we'll be right back. Several really convenient parts about this instrument. For one, uh, you have two inputs. We've got a microphone input, which is a quarter inch input, as well as a stereo eighth inch uh, input. And we've got uh, volume control on that right out front. So that's going to be really uh, easy, really great. If you've got a microphone that you're using, uh, you're accompanying yourself, something like that, or you're playing along uh, to an iPhone or, or some sort of an external uh, sound source and you want to just you know quickly plug it in uh, with, a, with a mini jack, you've got it there uh, and that's nice and easy. We've got two kind of mod wheels. We've got the pitch bender wheel and then the mod wheel two over here. Uh, always useful. Uh, we have four assignable um, knobs which you can use uh, to hook this up to a DAW. Uh, and, uh, you know, with a synth instrument, you can assign whatever parameters and variables you want to there, uh, which is always nice. It is equipped with quite a few onboard rhythms, as well as a metronome. Um, that might be a given, but it's always worth a mention. Uh, you can turn the speakers on and off with a really easy switch right here. And if you're in kind of a crazy playing situation where you don't know if you're going to be hitting a key or a button, if it's getting that violent on stage, uh, you've got panel lock, which basically will just shut down your ability to inadvertently hit the wrong key. This has actually happened to me in a couple of situations, a couple of really um, fairly high profile gigs where I was enthusiastically playing and my finger accidentally hit the wrong patch in a very exposed section and quite a few people heard uh, like just the complete wrong sound at the wrong time is anyway let me just say the panel lock is a good feature it's there for a reason even if you very rarely ever use it uh, the instrument also accommodates a wide range of pedals so you can get control pedals uh, you know such as a um, I guess it's just would just be like a volume pedal or a control pedal um, I would highly suggest if you're going to be just using it with a sustain pedal that you get the DP-10, kind of their more robust one. The one that uh, comes with the instrument uh, is the DP-2. This is kind of a basic, uh, you know, foot switch. It does the trick, but if you're using this as a piano, uh, if that's like one of your main kind of use cases, highly recommend uh, upgrading this. And then finally, you've got MIDI uh, out, which is at this point, I think most people just assume that, uh, and all the USB ports you need to make all the different connections uh, that you could possibly uh, want to be making. Uh, the DP, the RD88 uh, has a couple of matching Roland carrying cases that you can get with this, uh, and you can match it with several amplifiers if you need. But just one last mention: this thing does have onboard speakers. Very unusual for a stage piano to have that. I realize it's not the only one in the market, but the majority of them do not have uh, those speakers. So, thank you so much for checking out the RD88. Uh, I'm a huge fan. This is a really great product for a great price and I encourage you if you're in the market for a portable piano even if you don't think you'll use very many of the sounds the quality of the sound you get out of this instrument is just exceptional um, and from a price point standpoint it's really really close uh, to like the FP60 so if the onboard sound is not a priority if you're going to be playing professionally and in most cases you think you can be able to get to a PA 
hard to argue that this maybe shouldn't be the choice. But anyway. Hope you have a great time shopping, researching, whatever brought you to the video. If it's the first time to the channel, we'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. Helps you stay up to date with all the videos that we're always coming out with and we love to hear from you as well. So leave a comment, we'll do our very best to get back to you. Once again, my name is Stu Harrison and this has been the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel.